can you talk a little bit about how um, Pen Rocks came to fruition and the inspiration behind it? Yeah, um, I'll try to make this short. Um, I grew up, I was a drummer and um, played in rock and roll and heavy metal bands growing up and uh, was introduced to steel drums through Jane Says, you know, with Jane Dixon and uh, with Stephen Perkins playing that. And then um, I fell in love with the steel pan, getting to know it through that song. So I kind of dumped the drums 30 years ago and started playing steel drums and got immersed in that. And I've been doing that for the last 25 years full time and uh, kind of came full circle. I was as a goof for me and a couple of buddies of mine. Um, I did a Ramones um, CD just to see if it would work. I wanted to see if, steel drums, the instrument that I love, work with the kind of music that I love, which is rock and heavy metal and punk rock. And uh, so I did that as a goof, kind of for a giggle. And the next thing I knew, I was in Spin Magazine, MTV.com, um, Global Rhythm Magazine, and figured out that it works and that other people dug it. So I just kind of stuck with it. And um, I've had the Pan Rocks, quote unquote, thing going since 2013 I did my first concert in Ohio and put together a bunch of bands we had a, about 150 people on stage um, playing Metallica and Foo Fighters and Nirvana and Led Zeppelin and all that kind of stuff and that was the first time we would put on a big concert like that and um, that worked and so now I kind of travel around the country and go to high schools and universities and teach kids how to play steel drums but at the same time, I get to teach them rock music on the steel drums. And uh, fast forward, I know I'm making this long, but then I came and talked to Mark Schumann in Los Angeles a year and a half ago. Um, he was a friend of mine. And uh, Matt Stark had a meeting with him before me. And Matt kind of was hanging around when I was talking to Mark and got wind of what I was doing. And uh, he invited me back to L.A. a month later to play at the Whiskey. I think he wanted to hear what it sounded like live. And it was just myself and a couple of pan players and Stephen Perkins on drums and at the Whiskey. And uh, the next morning I got the proposal to do Pan Rocks L.A., the thing we did last year from that, which, you know, was with Billy Sheehan and Tracy Guns and Stephen Perkins and Bruce Kulik. And we did the, uh, we just picked out songs that we thought would be generally popular with people because I'm just trying to turn people on the steel pan and introduce them to what I'm doing, but right. I wanted to do it with something really familiar. So we did the Cashmere, we did Kiss, we did a James Addiction tune because we have Perkins. We did Carol of the Bells because we're thinking of a trans siberian type live show, you know, eventually. So we just wanted to let, just kind of showcase all the different styles in rock and it could do. Um, and then that turned out to be a huge success beyond what I could have thought. And uh, Matt and I hit it off, and we turned out to be good friends. And when the documentary came out this spring, it was over, and he was like, well, dude, you want to do another one? And I was like, yeah. And we looked at each other. We were in Vegas when we did this, and we, he was like, what's next? And we both agreed it's a rush. So that's where we are today. <laughs> yeah, it's such a cool and unique way to pay tribute to rock music, and I agree that it works. And I was going to ask you how you guys decided on Rush, but um, I'm guessing you guys are – big fans of Rush and thought it would be well, a good challenge or what was yeah, the reason? Exactly. exactly. I am. And uh, like Matt, you know, he's, he grew up a Kiss guy. And of course, when I was six years old, I fell in love with Kiss. I mean, who doesn't want to be Kiss when they're six? <laughs> and Peter Chris. But when I got a little bit older and I was playing, I've been playing drums since I was three. And so by the time I was 11 or 12, I was introduced to Rush. And like you said, of course, it's a more of a challenge. Their music is a lot more complicated um, you could say interesting if you like it, but um, so that's when I was turned on to Rush, and I just kind of stuck with them ever since. Um, and I still love Kiss as much as I ever did, but Rush kind of raised the bar to turn. Like in the um, video I did for our pledge music, was, I kind of say that Kiss inspired me to be a, a rocker or a rock star, kind of like the Beatles did with a lot of people the generation before me. But um, Rush inspired me to be a musician. And uh, the cool thing about it with the steel pan is that now we can raise the bar and make the music a little bit more complicated. And who doesn't want to hear YYZ on steel with 50 steel pan players? And it's not quite as complicated as the music that we play in Trinidad with the 120 piece bands I play with down there. But it's a lot more complicated than Kiss and Cashmere, you know? Right. <laughs>
So, and we think it's going to be really cool. And um, the fact that we got Portnoy to sign on with us is was huge and uh, very uh, humbling because, uh, yeah, to have him want to be a part of it was, I was like, okay, now it's on. So, uh, so that's really exciting as well. Yeah, that's amazing to have his name tied to the project. And uh, yeah. are you guys, um, I think I read that you guys are planning to hopefully take the show on the road and perform live. Yeah, the the ultimate goal, and kind of in both of these, we have an idea for like a big show, like a rock show, which is one thing. But with the Rush thing, um, you know, it's a little bit more, I don't want to, I don't, maybe might marginalize because, you know, Rush fans are Rush fans. And there's not a lot of people outside of that world that really love Rush. So to answer your question, we definitely have some, um, a show in the works. We're doing the music for it now. And uh, so hopefully there's going to be some shows in 2019. It's another big um, project to try to put together and to try to fund. And then, of course, to get the players, because my players are from all over the country and Canada. It's not like you can just go to your music store, like if you're in the rock band, and say, hey, I need a guitar player and a drummer and a bass player. It's like, hey, man, I need 50 steel drum players. And I'm in North Carolina. I don't live near any of them. So it's a little bit more complicated and more of a chore to put these things together. But uh, but if you can offer them something really cool to do, everybody flies in on their own dime, and they come out and they want to be a part of it. So uh, that's kind of a test to how amazing the steel band community is. Yeah, well, I think it would be cool to see live, but definitely the hear it on record is a treat itself. So I'm really looking forward to it. And if people want to support the project, there's a Pledge Music website. Is that right? Yeah, we're at um, Pledge Music. It's pledgemusic.com forward slash project with a S forward slash Panrocks Rush. And we have a lot of really cool pledge items, anything from Panrocks Rush t-shirts to uh, – me coming and doing um, clinics at your school or university or private concerts to a full-on concert um, to Morley Wah pedals. You know, they endorsed me and they um, donated some for the cause. And so we have a lot of nice pledge items that people can pledge and support us. And then they, when they follow us, once they are pledging, then they're going to get behind-the-scenes exclusive content like video and some audio and that kind of thing that you won't be able to get. Um, like on social media until, you know, a little bit after the project. So they can get, just kind of follow the journey with us, the good days and the bad days. <laughs> well, hopefully more good ones than bad ones. <laughs> well, they're good. Some of them are stressful. So uh, like I, said, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, well, is there anything else that you want to tell us about uh, the record, what people, what songs people can expect? Yeah, um, we're letting that kind of, we're just kind of doing three. Um, we're doing YYZ, Spirit of Radio, and uh, Tom Sawyer. Oh, yes. But, yeah, for the record, those are the three tunes. And um, I guess the other thing I, I love to say, especially since I'm reaching an audience that doesn't know a lot about the steel drum and the history, I just like it, just let people know the steel pan comes from Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies. And uh, it's the only acoustical instrument created in the uh, 20th century. It's literally 70, 75 years old. It's a brand-new instrument. We haven't really scratched the surface with it yet here in the Western world, and uh, that's what we're trying to do with Pan Rocks is inspire kids to want to play music and inspire people that don't know a lot about a pan to start listening to what we can do and hear the versatility of it so it just doesn't feel like you're listening to a, you know, beep, 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 beep under a palm tree while you're drinking <laughs> a Mai Tai or, you know, or Margaritaville. We're trying to get that stigma out of it and uh, – let people know you can play heavy metal music with it, rock, jazz, classical, that kind of thing. So I'm kind of taking it to a rock round. Yeah, that's an amazing mission. Definitely support it and looking forward to the record. Um, Very. When are you uh, hoping to have it completed? We go into the studio the 29th and 30th of November and the 1st of December to record. And then it'll get mixed sometime in December and um, by Smiley Sean, um, who works with Tommy Lee, and then my mastering engineer, Dave Collins, who just won a Grammy with Metallica's last record. He's, he mastered our last one, and I've worked with him a few times. That'll probably happen in January. So I'm hoping we'll be able to release it. I should be safe if I say, like, February 1st. Okay. You know, so I, I think that we should be able to get it by then. If not, then we're not doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Very so, cool. Well, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to call in and uh, talk with us. Much appreciated.